Welcome to Comic Confidential, a pop culture podcast, the weekly show where we discuss the hottest stuff from the world of pop culture. I'm your host, Cade Moyer, and alongside me today is a returning guest. It's a, some would say a listener favourite. I would say one of my favourites, easily my favourite, much better than Troy. That mm. is Amy. It's me. You're back. I'm back from the ghost realm. Yes, you are. You're back from the soul stone, some would say. Yeah, <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. And loving being back, actually. Yeah. It's nice to um, record with such a actual proper recording setup. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for those who don't know, Amy uh, records with a, I think it's an Xbox gaming headset yeah, for the, uh, the Potterheads podcast. I'm a bit of a pleb. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. But you know what? You don't need the best equipment to nope. get like good audio. You could record with, <laughs> honestly, uh, like your um, iPhone headphones. I should next time. You should. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can have fun editing that. Yeah. No, it will sound exactly the same. I bloody guarantee it. Mm. So what's been going on, Amy? Oh, just stuff. Life. Stuff? You've been busy. You've I been have. busy recording the Potterheads podcast. I have. I have with Kirsten. You guys are, what, about... 10 episodes deep at the moment? Yes, yep. Into the the fun parts of the second book. Oh, so, is it really? Yes, yes. Are you getting closer about the halfway point then? Mm, yeah, nearly there. Yeah? Yep. Oh, how exciting. I know. It makes it easier to uh, really get into the chapters when there's a lot going on in the chapters and not just, oh, I'm Harry Potter. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> anyway. Fair enough. So, Amy, what have you been watching since you've uh, you've kind of been away from, um, I guess, the main show? Yes, I have. Look, um, Orange is the New Black. Oh, yes, has just come out. So oh. I'm like engrossed in that at the moment. I'm. I think I'm five or six episodes deep. Yeah. And it's spinning me out because there's uh, Prometheus from Arrow in it. Yes. I. And you know what? I was sitting there watching it. I'm like, who is this guy? Yeah. And he's hilarious. I know, he's quite funny. He's great. He's great. It just makes me love... I don't know who that guy is, <laughs> but I love him. Me too. He's amazing. He is. And um, I don't want to say anything about it because I'm so into it. And I'm like, I hate when those people are like, oh my God, have you seen episode eight when such and such does this? <gasps> I'm like, no. Why, why do people do that? I don't know. They just think that everyone has all the time in the world and watches every episode. It's only been out for a handful of days. I know. And I'm like, yeah, I think I've watched... Maybe four episodes. Yeah. So anyway, still quite new into the season. Ooh. But anyway, so don't tell me what happens. I won't. So I won't. I won't. <laughs> did you? Uh, how would you go with any CW shows? Did you? Uh, you, you continue with them, or did you oh. kind of fall off that bandwagon? I kind of fell off the bandwagon a little bit. There. Look, I keep up with what's going on, just in news wise. Yeah. But I'm not sitting down and watching them every week. That's fair. Mm, they got a little bit draining. Uh, they got very draining. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I have no soul. There's, I'm just a shell of a human now yep. because I, I went through and watched the whole, entire season of uh, Flash, oh. Arrow and Supergirl. So that nah. was rough. Nah. I, and do you know what? I've kind of been into the 100 as yes. well. So it's kind of taken my time. I'm like, screw you, CW shows. I'm off. Fair but enough. Anyway. Well, I think the hundred is technically a CW show, but it doesn't fall under a different that vein. That, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's up another tier. It's, it is. It's the good good stuff. <laughs> the stuff you want to watch every week. Exactly. Now, are you up to date on the hundred? No, I'm not because Orange is the new. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 running it's block been, on you. It's been pushed back now. Yeah, fair enough. How far in are you? What episode number? Um, I'm up to episode six. I oh, think. okay. So, like, I just crammed. When they came out. Yeah. When episode six came out, I watched all six in one night. <laughs> Damn. And then I yeah, was like, okay, that's enough. Okay, fair enough. Because um, my husband hadn't watched any and he's like, stop watching them without me. That's how he sounds also. Yeah. Um, stop watching them without me. So then I had to wait. Damn. I know. I don't Wait. even know how I mean, how many episodes are out at the moment. It's a short season. There's mm. only, I think, there's only thirteen episodes. Oh, okay. So I'm yeah. close. Yeah. I'm like halfway then. You're you're about to get into the fun part. Oh, am I? Yeah. It's it get it gets <laughs> crazy. So uh, me and my wife we watch that week to week as well. So mm. it's her favorite show. So I um I'm chastised when uh when I don't get it for her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what though? I struggled with some of the other seasons of yeah. the 100. I was like. Oh. Draining. I feel you. Last season of the the one hundred was very meh yeah. to me. Yeah. So I was I was usually just reading comics on the iPad whenever mm. it was on and <laughs> multitasking. Yeah, and <laughs> like I'll listen to it mm. because I don't know. I don't think I feel like I need to always watch it. Yeah. But then my wife would go, "Oh my god, did you see what happened then?" I'm like, "Yep, yep." <laughs> I was totally following along. That's insane. I can't believe <laughs> Bellamy did that. Oh my god! And Clark has killed some more people. Like. 
Yeah. She's always It is what people. it is. Anyway. Let's get into let's. some Disney. Yay! So with the merger deal between Disney and Fox going through, it got us thinking about a time before the MCU and the new world of a Disney-run Star Wars universe. Some would say a simpler time, a time where princesses and animated movies dominated our screens. And today, we are ranking our top five Disney and Pixar films. I've been waiting for this episode. And you know what? To be honest, you can't really have Disney without Pixar in these days. No, you can't. But like I was saying to you earlier, I found Pixar fell off my list a lot. Yeah, that's very mm, surprising. I, I know. Uh, any reason for that? Is it just because you've got some absolute Disney bangers in yeah. the in the bank there? I think it's because, like, I've associated my list with when I was younger, watching these movies, and would I watch them again now? Ah, yeah, okay, so, so it has the same power yes, with you. Yes, that's right. And, yeah, Pixar, great films, but none of them are... Anyway. None of them are great. Like, <laughs> no, they're great, but they're not the best. No, not like okay. I could watch some of the ones in my top five. I could watch every day. I ah, feel. Mm. that's a good way to go about it. Yeah. I got ones with me that kind of stuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm very interested because I think we're going to have a, uh, a little bit of a mixed, a mixed bag, bag yeah. here. So um, <laughs> Amy, do you want to kick it off with your number five? My number five was Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Yes. Animated or? Animated. Okay. Got to be animated. I remember being a little girl and wanting Peter Pan. To, I didn't have a window like the cool window in the actual The one film. that opens out. Yeah. I had, like, you know, fly screen. Yeah, stop security the security to stop dangerous people coming into your <laughs> that's house. That's right. That's right. Was on a top floor level though. So I was like, oh. come on, Peter Pan. Anyway, it stuck with me because I don't think there's anyone in the world who doesn't know what Neverland is. Yep. Um. And wanting to fly. I wanted to fly. Yeah, right. I think everyone wants to fly, but especially after watching Peter Pan, wanted to fly. You know what? I'm going to, I'll meet you on that because mm. I remember watching Peter Pan, the uh, the animated movie, mm. and I was like, I want some like pixie dust. Yes. I love pixie dust. And Tinkerbell was like my homie. She hated everyone yeah. except for Peter Pan. And I was <laughs> like, mm. but like, it's such an old film. I think it came out. What is it? 1953. Wow, that's yeah. really old. Yeah. <laughs> and to think, like, the animation is quite amazing and the mm. process that they had to go through back then. in the day to make these movies. I know. I didn't – I couldn't find anywhere how long it took them to make the movie. But, like, when – like, I was thinking, I remember The Simpsons being real shit. Yeah. And then, and then you look at this yeah. and it is fantastic still. So, number five, Peter Pan for me. Wow, that's a really good pick. Yep, that's, loved it. Thanks, that's great. thanks. I spent a lot of time on my list. Do you remember when you first watched it? I probably, look, one of the um, ones on my list was the first Disney film I watched, and I'll tell you about that when I get to it. But oh. this one, I think, came sort of after that. So, I probably would have been five or six, yeah. I'd say. Do you remember how it finishes, what happens with it? I do. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of sad that Wendy gets... You know, she goes home. I was like, you dumb mole. Stay in Neverland. <laughs> Stay in Neverland. <laughs> but, um, and then another movie came out, uh, Peter Pan 2 or whatever they yep. called it. And she comes back into the, you know, the picture. Her daughter Jane, I think her name is. Ah, goes. okay. So I was like, oh, well. So she's obviously so a fair bit older. Yes. Ah. Yeah. Whereas Peter Pan is still a little boy. There you go. Hmm. You know, I am pretty sure the name Wendy was invented for this, uh, this cartoon. Really? Yeah. That is some good trivia. That is. Mm. I wish I had a little bit more trivia on all the other movies I've got <laughs> now because I don't think anything's really going to gonna measure out. up to that. All right. Well, that's my number five. What's wow. yours? Okay. So my number five is The Lion King animated <gasps> movie. <gasps> from number five. Number five. Yeah. From 1994. <laughs> and um, this makes the movie be, uh, my list because it was the first movie that made me cry. Really? Yeah. I think Aww. I would have been six years old, maybe seven. Cute. And oh, maybe eight. I was, I was pretty young. I was a little boy and I remember mm. like, oh my God, I'm like having tears in my eyes. When Simba's like, wake up, Dad. Oh, even now. <laughs> oh, the feels are getting me, Amy. I know. I love that movie. It's on my list. But Is it really? Yeah, Don't tell me where. I'm, Don't I'm tell me where. I'm not going to tell you where. And, um, you know, it had such a great story and a great cast. And the other thing that strikes me about it is they're still making renditions of it now. Like there was a Broadway show, The Lion King, like, like yeah, last year. I think yeah. it was. Yeah, and it's it's killing it. It mm. is like sold out everywhere it goes. I know. I tried to see it when I was in Melbourne 
No tickets. No tickets. No, that's, you know, that's the last time I cried when I couldn't get <laughs> like <laughs> Broadway tickets. tickets. That's fair. I mean, I would uh, I would also be quite upset about that. But, you know, I, I feel like the story behind The Lion King is um, it's it's one of those classic tales of like redemption from a from a, the hero who's kind of being like cast mm. out. So it's it's quite good. And the movie has got some of the most memorable like mm. little Little stories, little side plots, little yeah. even little songs throughout it. Yeah, Hakuna Matata. Yes, everyone says that. Mm-hmm. And you know, I read somewhere actually a bit more trivia. They were they couldn't think of a way to sort of get that song. Like they had a song slotted for that part of the movie. Yeah, but they were going to make it about you know a whole song about eating bugs. Really, I think it was. And then the film production crew went over to Africa. And came back with the phrase Hakuna Matata. Oh, really? So they were like, let's do that. That's awesome. Mm. That is so cool. I know. I love that film. I could watch that film every day. Do you know when I was a kid, I would make my mum put that film on every day. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. Every day. Very interesting though. You know, it um, it nearly grossed a billion dollars. I saw that somewhere. I it, was like, surely that's wrong. Oh, no. It, it, it It's spot on. And I mean, that was um, up to 2013. But, you know, for a movie that is... Quite essentially, mm. pretty bloody old. Yeah, that's done well. I know, and like, I would like to think that someday when I have kids, I will be like, "Here, children, here's the Lion King." Yeah, go cry your going. eyes out. Yeah. You're about to become a man slash woman. <laughs> here's your introduction to the real world. Absolutely. And do you know it had a forty five million dollar budget? Forty five million. Forty five million dollars. Holy, well, it's done well then. <laughs> so uh, Disney were absolutely banking on that bad mm. boy to perform, and you know what? It obviously did. It did. Amy, what's your number four? My number four is The Little Mermaid. Ah, <laughs> yes. Very good. Now, I have um, something to say about The Little Mermaid and oh. Sebastian. Oh, yes. They've kind of wrecked Aquaman for me now. Oh. <laughs> because anytime I say under the sea. <laughs> it comes up. It comes up. Under the sea. Exactly. And that right there is why it's my number four. Is it really? Yeah, because you can, I think I can sing every song. Same with The Lion King, but I could sing every song in The Little Mermaid. And you know what else? I liked it because thinking back on it now and watching it now as an adult, I liked that Eric didn't fall in love with Ariel because she looked pretty. Ah, yes. He fell in love with her voice, even though some hag had her voice (laughs) for some of the time. But yeah, so I was like, wow, that's really cool. Also, mermaids. So, yeah, mermaids, mm, absolutely. Uh, now, what do you think of Ursula as a villain? Um, I actually love Ursula as a villain. And you know what? My younger sister would watch this show with me and she would get upset every time Ursula would get defeated. Really? Yeah, she, so like, she associated was like, with it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, why is that? I don't know. I just feel like she was like, oh, like she's really pretty and cool. I'm like, she's not meant to be pretty and cool. She's meant to be like the ugly villainess yeah. with these like scary eels. And stuff, but yeah, I don't know. She you know, like, she it. is a pretty cool little villain. She is. I mean, little's not probably the right <laughs> word to say for her. A but little big villain. Yeah, she uh, she definitely had uh, some interesting motives. So, mm. oh, good pick, good pick. Yes. What's yours? Number my four. No- oh, my number four. Now, this is going to be a, an absolute throwback because mm. um, this was this is mm. the first movie I ever remember watching. Right. Tell me. Ever. And that's Aladdin from 1992. <gasps> I love Aladdin. It is amazing. And I mean, RIP to Robin Williams. I but know. Man, this guy owned this movie. And it's kind of going to be just cemented in history forever. He played mm-hmm. an amazing genie. He sure did. Do you know what? The Aladdin lunchboxes that they bought out. So 1992, I was one year old. Right? Yes. Uh, the very first lunchbox I ever had when my mum sent me to daycare was an Aladdin lunchbox. Was it really? Yeah. And I was like, because, you know, I feel sorry for my mum because she had four daughters and all of them loved Disney movies. Ooh. So she would have seen the shit out of all the oh. movies. <laughs> oh, that's rough. I know. But I, I loved Aladdin. The um, Do you know what? I'm just thinking back on it. The music that was in these kind of films that we're talking about now is still around. I wonder if songs from like, you know, Frozen or Moana or whatever else. If they're going to have that holding value. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I I wonder the same mm. because, you know, the songs back here, and I, I actually say this about just any kind of music in general, is mm. I feel like the music in today is like very churn and burn. It's great yeah. for what it is. But then it's gone. It's got it's, a very set shelf life. Exactly. Mm. It's it's never going to be rememberable mm. at all. 
Whereas movies like this, they just hold that special moment in your heart from a, a, a simpler time, a yes to year. Mm. And the songs, they just stick with you. I know. I um, I was in a musical of Aladdin Were when you I really? was younger. Who did yes. you play? Um, I actually Please played... Please say the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> I played Abu. Oh, did you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no speaking lines. Wow. But yeah, I was just like, I would sit there and watch them sing and I was like, oh my God, I love this. Because I was like little. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Couldn't be trusted. No. Nah. They oh, like, I at least that. I wasn't a tree. Well, that's like, true. There's nothing worse than being a tree in a play. <laughs> there was some grass just like <laughs> shh, 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 blowing in the wind. Oh, that's awesome. Now, uh, believe it or not, this one had a $28 million budget. Mm. So, um, you know, that's uh, did reel in half a billion dollars though. Whew. So it's not like Lion King level. But it's still pretty damn good. It's still pretty good. I mean, it had nearly half the budget of what Lion King had. That's true. So, um, you know what? In this day and age, for a film of what that covers, Mm. that's pretty amazing. Sure is. And, you know, I think it was one of the first films I watched where I watched sort of a different place in the world, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Like actual, you know, the Lion King is set wherever else, but they're lions. Yeah, so in Africa is wherever else I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, and then watching Aladdin, I was like, wow, there's actually different places in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I mean, it was very multicultural for what mm. it was. And I, I'm the same. It like really opened up my mind to, mm. you know, other places in the world. I may mm. have been, you know, six or something at the time, but, mm. you know, that's a very sheltered little mind then. And to see a movie like this with, you know, different types of characters, different mm-hmm. types of locations, it's uh, it really broadens the mind of a, a younger child. And movies like this, probably hold like very, very, um, I guess, integral parts to Mm. teaching children about all these new things in the world that they, you know, parents will sometimes neglect to go, Mm. oh, did you know over here Mm. there's this, this, this and this? It's not the same as where you are, but it's blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's very eye-opening. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Amy, Mm. what are you looking at for your... uh, your number three. My number three was actually Aladdin. Okay, tell so me why. <laughs> tell me why this was your number three. Um, well, we've already ticked off on most of it. Robin Williams was amazing in this. And I didn't appreciate it when I was younger, obviously. I was just like, ha funny, genie, man, whatever. But I remember when Robin Williams passed away, actually, going back and watching this. And I was like getting a bit like emotional, like, hmm. Robin Williams. Like, he's made many, many films, but I think this was the one that really stuck with me. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. This is the one I'm, I'm going to remember him forever for. Mm. This and probably Jumanji, but... Jumanji is also a great one, yes. Yeah, but I feel like this movie is him, mm. down to a T. If he wasn't in it, I don't think it would have the same life it's had. Oh, I agree, 100%. Mm. I mean, it's just one of those movies that... It has so many things that can, like, stick out to you, and for him to be the genie in this movie... Man, what a perfect casting. I reckon. It doesn't happen that well these days. No, no <laughs> not at all. It's um, it's quite surprising. Like, I don't think you'll ever find someone who will play a genie as good as him. No. If they ever remake this movie, which I'm sure they will because, yeah. they, you know, uh, Disney are going through and doing mm. like real life um, recreations of the movie. They've already done the Jungle Book. Mm-hmm. They did the... Or Beauty and the Beast, yep. which absolutely killed it. That was a great film. Yeah. And we're getting, I think, The Jungle Book next. Yes. Or, or if we've already got that one. Something else is coming out. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Mm. I mean, this one's surely on the list. Yep. And I can't wait. That would be actually a really good one to see, Yeah, I think. Bring it all into perspective. I'd love that. Disney, if you're listening, Aladdin, please. What's your What's your thoughts on the theory behind the uh, the idea that all these Disney movies are connected? Oh, look, I've read a lot of theories about it because that's what I like to do in my spare time when I have it. Um, I think it's just a freak coincidence. You reckon? Yeah. I don't. I think they're all kind of connected, especially when you get into the um, like the 3D animated movies because there's so many throwbacks to everything else in there. Yeah, I guess that's true. Like I read a lot of things about, you know, Tarzan and bloody Frozen and whatever yeah. else. And I'm like, did you... You wouldn't have made Tarzan or whatever with that in mind, but definitely you could have made Frozen with that in mind. So yeah. maybe they're looking to evolve to that kind of thing so they can get more of a interlacing yeah. kind of I would love thing. to see that. Mm. I reckon that would be so great. A massive Disney family tree. Imagine finding Nemo crossed <laughs> with 
I don't know, let's say The Little Mermaid. Hey, that would actually be really good. That could have been something That would have been something amazing. Maybe let's go they, work for Disney. Let's we go do it. We have some great ideas. Amy, if you had three wishes, let's say you're oh. Aladdin. Oh. Do you know what? I used to think about this a lot when I was a kid. I'm like, and then he was like, you can't wish for more wishes. You can't wish for love. You can't whatever else. Who would wish for love? Not me. Definitely not me. It's for, okay, if I put my young Amy shoes on, okay. what I would have wished for would have been a trip to Disneyland. Ah, yeah, that's a good one. I would have gone to Disneyland. I would have wished for lots of puppies. Oh. Like, and then... That, How many is lots? Like... At least 11. Have you ever seen the videos from the Dog Islands? Okay, scratch that. Rule two, number two, an island. An island. Yep. Number three, lots of dogs to fill the island. Wow. Done. That's a lot of puppy poo. Mm. Oh, look, I'll just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'd save one of the wishes to be able to endlessly click my fingers and all and the poo clean disappears. Up the poo. Yeah. That's that's not a bad wish. No, I don't think okay. so. Obviously, my adult wishes would be a lot different. Like, yeah. hmm, I'd love a house. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'd love a mortgage that like was non-existent. Yeah, and, that'd be great. But uh, yeah, no, okay. Let's see. If I was uh, when I was watching this, I probably what did we say? It came ooh, out in ninety two. Ninety two. Tough. Mm. That, that's tough. What would what would a young Cade want? He would probably want lots of Legos, <laughs> all the Legos that he could um, have, just unlimited. Uh, probably a lot of video games, mm. and oh, I don't know, maybe soft drink. Soft drink, endless maybe. a fridge of endless. Yeah, soft drink. Yeah, maybe something like that. You know, lots of uh, lots of soft drink keep me all sugared up <laughs> and <laughs> ready to play the video games. All, all the video games and all the Lego. <laughs> Ah, oh, such simple minds we Absolutely. had. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so that's going to take me to my number yes, three. Yes, tell me. Now, uh, this is where things start to change. Okay. This is where my change happens, Amy. Right. <laughs> this is where I go into modern day. Okay. And I go into uh, Monsters Incorporated. Oh, I love that movie. 2001. And you know what? This might be the only time I didn't dislike John Goodman. <laughs> He's such a character he in this is. movie. He is. And I mean, this is such a, a culture change from what mm. John Goodman is because John Goodman was in Roseanne mm-hmm. and then John Goodman went and did like asshole characters. Yeah. Like people you do not relate with. Exa- exactly. And I mean, I, I get it. That works mm. for what he does he, and he does it very, very well, but mm-hmm. he's never played those people that you like. Um, in this movie, you love him. You do. He is absolutely fantastic in this movie. And... Every supporting character in this movie is perfectly casted and they just kill it, man. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I was, what was I watching the other, I was talking to somebody about Boo, the little girl. And I was like, I think I must have seen a still somewhere where it like comes full circle and then she comes back as an older lady. Oh, really? And sees like a monster or something. I don't know where I watched it or that if I dreamed familiar. it. That familiar. I might have dreamed Maybe I was it. in your dream, Amy. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but then I was like talking with someone, I'm like, that would have been a really good thing to see. Like, you know, like Peter Pan and Wendy, like we were talking about. Yeah. Boo and her monsters. Yeah, that would have been really good. Mm. I feel like that might have been a scene in the movie. I can't remember it. Because they did bring out uh, a Monsters, Inc. movie not long ago. Uh, Monsters University. University, that's yeah. what it was. Now, um, I'm going to tell you some box office on this one okay. too. Now, this is where uh, this is where animation changed. Mm-hmm. This is where the game changed. And uh, this had a budget of $115 million. Holy! And that's absolutely crazy. I mean, that's the type of money that you expect in, a, in an MCU movie, yeah. in a superhero movie. Yep. Just goes to show you that there's so much hardworking people behind the scenes mm. to make these animated movies. And this movie brought home just over five point, oh, about half a billion dollars. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So uh, Disney know how to get these uh, these big home runs happening. That's right. No wonder they're one of the biggest corporations in the world. Mm. Do you remember watching this for the first time? Um, I do remember watching it for the first time. And all I remember is Mike Wazowski. That's yes. it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And then I must have watched it again and actually taken in depth what happens in the film. But yeah, my first thing, that is what comes to mind. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, Billy Crystal played a great little Mike in this I movie really too. I really like I sporadic. could picture him like green and just <laughs> actually running around. I feel like it's almost a mocap performance by this character. Mm-hmm. He's very, um, very like pulling the ends of his hair out type yeah. character. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, you know, he's kind of like a, a guy down on his luck and mm. he's just kind of just getting through and uh, he's got his good uh, buddy Sullivan by him. Sully. And uh, what I like about this is it's like such a unique look at what 
the monsters, mm. I guess monsters are. And the fact that they work in a scare factory mm. and this is how the monster, I guess, universe is powered is by scare. children's screams, mm. which is um, interesting. It is. But I guess watching it as a kid, it makes you kind of be like, oh, monsters aren't that scary. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. And I mean, they do a great little job with Boo throughout this movie who, um, you know, mm. for a character that doesn't actually say anything say except anything, Mike Wazowski. <laughs> yeah, has a lot of heart and really carries the movie through. Hmm. It does. It's a real feel-good movie, that It one. is a feel-good movie. Mm. All of these are feel-good movies, except for maybe that part where um, Mufasa dies. But oh, well, Spoiler alert. You know what? <laughs> to say this, this might be one of the only Disney movies that hasn't had a tragic moment in it. Yeah, that's actually quite true. I mean, they do have to send Boo home, but... But Boo doesn't die. No, she's just gone on to a, another life. Yeah. If you will. Hmm, I wonder. It's not like there was ever a moment in this movie where something terrible could have absolutely happened. Yeah, not like Jafar taking over or like Ursula destroying all the boats. Yeah. Or, yeah, I guess that's very true. I see a little bit of a sea change in Disney's mm. approach here because um, the movies that I talk about after this, you'll see a lot of this in it. Mm. So very interesting because think back to their very first animated like major release, which was, I believe, Bambi. Yeah. <laughs> Woof. Man. If that didn't scar you as a child, nothing would have. That's terrible, that movie. Mm-hmm. Even the music in that haunts you. I know. Do you know what? I think when I first, like Bambi's not on my list, maybe honourable mention, but when I first watched Bambi, I didn't actually understand that his mother had died. Yeah. I was like, I didn't get it. Yeah, I was the same. What's all this scary stuff? Yeah. And why then, are those hunters so so dangerous? Mm, why are they like dark and shadowy? Yeah. And then, yeah, watching it again, I was like, I think my mum was like, okay, that's enough of Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> you know that movie was made in 1940? Holy. That's a very, very like impressive piece of, uh, I guess, motion. It must have taken a long time. Mm. I can't imagine you know, you can buy the cells from movies from those eras. Really? Yeah. <gasps> because each one is hand-painted and crafted. Oh. So they, you can, they, they're they worth a fortune, but, mm. you know, those are things that you can actually buy. It's like the Pyramids of Giza of Disney movies. Yeah. Mm. Yes, definitely. Built by hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So number three for you, Monsters, Inc. Does that mean it's my number two time? Yeah, it is, Amy. We're getting into the pointy end. Oh, we are. We are. And my number two is one of my all-time favorite movies. Mulan. 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 Okay, you're going to have to sell this All to right. me because I actually haven't seen it. <gasps> what? Yeah, so give me All give right, me a full-on breakdown. And spoilers galore because, um, you know what, I'm probably never going to go see it. <laughs> you should watch entice it. Entice me, entice me. All right, let me set the scene. Family, right? Mulan is the only daughter of this family and it's in the war time. I don't even actually know what war it is. You know, the Huns are coming from Mongolia, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and the word goes out that each family needs to um, supply, if you will, an able-bodied man to go and fight in the war. Okay. Mulan's mum wants her to be an eligible bachelorette and go and get married and have a great family. Um, and because they don't have a son, her dad actually, even though he's crippled, he's crippled, puts his hand up to go and fight in the war. Oh. Anyway, Mulan doesn't want her dad to do that. She's got real long, luscious hair. This scene in this film... One of the best scenes in an animated film. Okay. She goes, she steals her dad's samurai sword, cuts all her hair off and pretends to be a man. Ah, okay. And then she goes in his place to the war. Wow. So then she has to learn. Very selfless. Yes, yes. And it's like very not damsel in distress, which is one of the reasons I love this Ah, film. okay, cool. So she, off her own back, rides off into the sunset to go to war camp Ah. with her trusty sidekick Mushu, played by Eddie Murphy. Really? It's her spirit dragon. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, talking back on it now, it doesn't sound like the most amazing film, but I tell you what, it's one of the best films out there. Soundtrack is on point. If anyone ever says to me, even now, let's get down to business, my next line is to defeat the Huns. Is it that really? is the line from the song. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone says, let's get down to business, I'm like, to defeat the Huns. Like, that's what I do. Yeah, right. Mm, it's a great movie. Cool. And yeah, anyway, it ends up that she falls in love with the, yeah, there's a bit of love in it, Disney film. Well, of anyway, course. She falls in love with the camp, oh, I can't even, Captain? I think he's a captain, whatever he is. Captain Zhang? Zhao? Anyway, falls in love with him. He doesn't know that she's a woman, obviously. Oh. So she's just like kind of oh. creepy, the whole movie. <laughs> 
And um, is his motives that way? Um, no, he just wants to train a great army. Okay. Because his dad before him was a great trainer, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, she ends up saving him and it comes out that she's a woman because she gets really injured and obviously she's got women parts that can't be hidden when you're injured. Okay. And the doctor's checking you out. So. Oh, right. Yeah. How's that go down? Uh, he kicks her out. Really? Kicks her out of the army. She's gone. Gone to go Damn. home. But she knows that um, the Huns are coming for um, the big, I can't even remember what they are, like the emperor. The emperor. Yeah. He's trying to kill the emperor. So she ends up running in and saving the day in her dress and she teaches all the other guys to wear a dress and climb up the poles and, yeah, saves oh, right. the emperor. And then she's an honourable army member. There you go. Mm, I'm not using any of the right terms here and I apologise to everyone. But hey, You're covering the bases. You get the gist. Yeah. Anyway, ah, number very two. Cool. Soundtrack is on point, like I said. Um, animation, and it's hilarious. Like, Mushu is very funny. Yeah, okay. Because he's like, yeah, go, go, girl, girl, like Eddie Murphy pretty much in a dragon's body. That's awesome. Mm, mm. And no one else can see this dragon. They can. He hides. So he oh, hides okay. in like the back of her tunic. Oh, okay. And sometimes yells things and people think it's her. And she's just like, ooh. Anyway. Fair enough. You should definitely watch it. Okay. That's going on the list. Yes. You've sold me. Yes. You've I couldn't sell me. you on Teen Wolf, but I've sold you on Mulan. <laughs> so there's lots. Is there any ninja action? Yes. 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 So there's like a whole like ninja training school fight what? scene. Yeah. I'm it's down. pretty cool. There's I am archery. So down. Yeah. And there's like the three the, the three stooges who are her friends. Yeah. Very funny. Very, Very funny. good. Mm. You've sold me. Number two on my list for a reason. Good I don't choice. know how much money it made. Do you want me to tell you? Yes. Okay, so uh I had a budget mm. of ninety million dollars. <laughs> and then that's in nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, it's not that like it's one of the newest films. I think it is the newest film on my list. Yep. It Ooh, is. Oh wow, there you yep. go. And uh it brought home three hundred hundred million dollars so right. so made a made a decent it's, amount. it's a medium performer in the mm. uh, in the terms of disney but you know what that's not bad mm, they did make a second one did so they really it must have done well enough ah, okay mm. does it continue the story yes oh, cool yeah yeah so like milan and her captain are getting married and they go on one last mission anyway this is mulan 2 it's not mulan <laughs> <laughs> but watch the first one first fair enough Do I'm, it. I'm all over it i'm all over it all right so my number two is The Incredibles. Oh, I wanted this on my list so bad. Why didn't you have it? Because when I was looking back on it, I'm like, yes, I love this film. But I was a lot older when I watched this film. Yeah, okay. And I, do you know what? I haven't even seen the second one yet. Haven't you? No, because I refuse to go to the movies and watch it with all the children. Oh, uh, that's a fair call. Yeah. That's so I'm waiting. Call. I'm waiting to watch it. Mm. Or maybe I'll go like middle of the day now that it's like getting out of the cinemas and go and watch it now. Yeah, that, that could be a good time to do it. But yeah. go see it when the kids are actually in school. Yeah, like that's if you have right. a day off in the middle of the week or something mm-hmm. like that, sneak in there, take some wine with you. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in a bottle? Just yeah. like, oh, it's just water. Well, actually, no, you can you can buy wine and oh. beer from the cinemas. Now. Maybe I'll do that. Get a beer, watch The Incredibles. But yeah, it was like so it would have been like my number six. Ah, I reckon. Okay. Just because it didn't stick or shape me as much as I think the other ones Fair did. Enough. But Fair enough. definitely one of it's a great film. Well, you see, this movie it came out in two thousand and four. Yeah. And that's kinda like when everything started really kicking off for of superhero mm. movies. Yes. I think um that year or maybe the year before that, that's when the Sam Raimi Spider Man movie yep. came out, which was um, you know, kind of groundbreaking of its time. Mm. Um we had X Men kind of getting released yep. around that similar time and um this was kind of like the Fantastic Four movie that mm. everyone really wanted. And, yep. you know, it delivered way better than what the actual Fantastic Four movies have ever, ever done. Yep. Ever done. And um, kind of it, it slipped into that that kind of geek mythos mm. for me when I kind of started venturing down the, uh, the path of world. comic book world. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, that's I feel that that's exactly the same for me. Another thing, too, is a lot of the characters in the film are very stick with you characters. Yep. I know we're saying that term a lot, but... Like Edna well, Mode. That's what, that's what Disney's all about, <laughs> yeah, though. Yeah, that's true. You don't want someone who's just, like, hiding off in the background. Yeah. But um, my dog actually look, looks like Edna Mode. Oh, really? Yeah. So, his haircut. <laughs> <laughs> so, every time I look at him, I'm like, yeah, I want to watch The Incredibles again. Hell yeah. Mm, no capes. No capes. No capes. No capes. I'm, I'm, I'm a no cape guy. Me too. I think she had a good point there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, a bit sad it didn't make it onto my list, but... Mm, I think it's just just outside for me. That's fair enough. Mm, all right. Are we at the, the big we're time? At, we're at the pointy end here, Amy. All right. 
My number one was The Lion King. The Lion King. The Lion King is my number one. I know it was your number five. That's why I was shocked. I was like, <gasps> wow, blasphemy. <laughs> why was it your number one? Um, I think this was the... F- well, actually, I would have watched Aladdin first, but this was the first time I remember being like wanting to watch a movie again in quick succession. Oh, okay. So my mum would play The Lion King and then I'd make her replay The Lion King. Yeah. And then I'd make her replay The Lion King. Like, I don't think I watch anything. I Actually... She even tells me a story that I watched The Lion King every day for a year. Wow. Yeah. So I loved that film. Yeah. Uh, that's that's dedication. Yeah. And I don't know if it was because I was hoping to see something different every time I watched it. Like, come on, Mufasa. Get out of the cannon. <laughs> but um, the characters in it, you know, from going from a young lion to an old lion. I don't think we ever... I hadn't seen anything like that in an animated film before. Yeah. So you kind of got two worlds. You got the world where he's young and playful and carefree and then he grows up and I don't know, you, not that I grew up with him because I would have been like five, but you know. And it's just, it's a great movie. I don't think I need to say much about it because if you haven't seen The Lion King, I'm not going to be your friend. Yeah. How do you feel about Jeremy Irons after ever seeing that movie and his portrayal of Scar? Um, I hate him. You hate him? <laughs> because he plays Scar. <laughs> So even though he, he you know, he's uh, Batman's butler now, yep. uh, you still hate him. Still hate him. Wow. Because, I don't know, Scar was like the first person I ever, person, you know, yeah, creature I ever remember hating. Oh, Like even Jafar, I was like, oh, whatever. But Scar, I was like, you're a bad man. He went next level. Yeah. You know, he killed the dad and then yep. he's trying to kill the son. Yep. I think, and I think it's because it was the first time I'd ever seen you know, someone kill someone, uh, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. I was like, why? Like, I didn't why would understand. You do this? Why would you do that? Why would you kill your brother? Yeah. And I would look at my sister and be like, I don't like you sometimes, but I'd never kill you. I'm, ne- I'm not going to throw you into a stampede <laughs> of buffalo. Yeah. And then just like that, that scene with Simba in there with him breaks my heart. Oh. Breaks my heart. It's it, it's uh, one of the most heavy scenes I mm. think I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah. And like you said, you know, the whole story of redemption, like, you know, the lost king coming back. It's just like, I'm like, yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Mm. I, I got you. Right. I got yeah. you. <laughs> Fist pump, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> and like um, Nala in it too. She's quite a, a strong character, I guess. Yeah. You know, goes to find the king, do all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, girl, get it. Mm. But. I don't know. Not obviously not when I was five, but yeah, now. But now. Now I'm like, yeah. Very good. Mm. Would you watch it today? I would actually. Yeah. I think I'm going to go home and watch it. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. I think it's one of those movies that um, every kid grew up with a copy mm. of it on VHS. Yes. I remember that, you know, I think I watched mine too much. My mum had to get a second one. That fear of putting it in and it spitting the VHS <gasps> back out. I'm like, no, no, get back in. Oh, no. But um, I actually, my one of my best friend's kids, I was babysitting him. And I was like, come on now, we're going to watch The Lion King. And he like wouldn't sit and watch it. I'm like, sit down and watch The Lion King. He's like, I don't know, two. So he has the attention span of a goldfish. Yeah. But I, yeah, try and force it on people whenever I can. Very good. I suggest (laughs) strapping him down and taping his eyelids open. (laughs) You will watch it and you will love it. You're becoming a man. (laughs) All right. What's your number one? My number one, and I'm super surprised this was not on your list, Amy, Aww. because this is right up your alley, I feel. I mean, yep. right in your... You would have been five when this movie been. came out. So this is 1995's Toy Story. Oh, look. I wasn't a big fan of Toy Story. Wow, really? No, and my husband is it because hates you, me for it. Is it because you hate Tom Hanks? Is it because you hate <laughs> Tim Allen? <laughs> yeah. Do you hate love and yeah. life? <laughs> do you like? Do you hate good things? Yeah, yeah, I must do. No, my husband, it's one of his favourite Disney ever, all-time movies. Yeah. And I just never got on the bandwagon. Wow. I don't know why. I can't tell you. I was very young. It, it just didn't <laughs> no. do it for you. And you know what? I don't think I've even seen the last Toy Story 3. <gasps> mm. Amy. So I watched the second one. That is like, the <laughs> most heartbreaking movie. I wouldn't know. You know what? I watched it once and I refused to watch it well, again. Well, what happened in it? fucking makes you cry that's what happens (laughs) andy says goodbye to his toys oh so he scrubs andy off woody's foot Mm. he does oh my goodness that would be a hard scene anyway this is the first toy story look i liked it but i think i think it was more of a boy a boy movie movie, if that makes if i want to say that like it's a shitty thing to say but you know like i get it i was about princesses yeah you've got a cowboy and you've got a a what like a, a spaceman yeah exactly an astronaut yeah 
And I didn't really relate with that. And the Fair Barbie, enough. the Barbie in the movie was a ditzy idiot. So I was like, well, I don't mm. really want to watch this. Anyway, so maybe that's why I never really got on board. And I didn't have any brothers. Fair enough. So we never, never did. I know, like, there's a snake in my boot and all yeah. that stuff. But. Yeah, no. I can I can see that, you know, uh, actually just kind of reflecting on it now. It is very boyish. Mm. I mean, you know, there's the two main characters mm-hmm. and then you've got like little army men yep. all throughout this movie. The 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 main character is a boy. Mm-hmm. I kind of I can see where you're coming from here, Amy. Which I think they needed back then because, you know, they had all these you know, the Lion King's not really neither here nor there, but some of the other movies that were coming out, you know, they were Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, yep. Cinderella, all they, those kind of things. They kind of needed to mm. get a little bit of the boy population to watch some of these Disney movies. Yeah. yeah. Rather than playing with G.I. Joes, they'd play with Woody and Buzz. Yeah, absolutely. I remember I had a mm. uh, had a Buzz. Yeah? A Buzz Lightyear. Yeah. Oh, did it Abs- make all the noises? It made all the noises. <laughs> it had the little laser. It even glew in the dark. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. That would have scared me if I was a child. <laughs> Just this little alien man glowing. Um, but like, you know, to infinity and beyond yeah. catchphrase. Absolutely. I think it's the best catchphrase out of any Disney film. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I'll, I'll stick by that. Yeah, there's none others that I can really, that really come to mind. But that one, definitely. Yeah. Now, uh, it's kind of like the typical odd couple story in this, which mm. is, I think, why I like it so much. You've mm. got your two, your two main people who mm. are complete opposites. You've got one who's very traditional and one who's very modern age. Mm-hmm. I mean... Tom Hanks really brings it home as Woody mm-hmm. and uh, Tim Allen, as much as I like dislike that person, I just, I don't connect with him. He just, he's always going to be Tim the tool man yeah. to me <laughs> and I just cannot get that out of my head. No, that's the same reason why I don't like Scar. Fair enough. Yeah. And he's Fair not, enough. he's not, his real name is Scar, yeah. just so you know. Oh, I He's gone you. by nothing else. <laughs> but you know, Tim Allen, he, uh, he knocks it out of the park as Buzz and mm. the, the interactions between these two and the camaraderie they build is, um. It's just good. Mm. And the way they kind of... I know we're talking about the first one, but the way they kind of carry that all the way through until, you know, Toy Story 3 mm. and then even Toy Story 4 coming out later this year. Really? There's another one? Yep. Oh. Yeah. So, um, mm. Amy, you need to get on board so you can... Maybe I will. Come on the cry train, <laughs> which I which I have no doubt that Toy Story 4 is going to be. Does he... So, at, tell me, at the end of Toy Story 3, does he, like, give away yes. his toys to who? It's a girl. Oh, a girl. Yes. Right. Is it like anyone he knows or he just is like, here, girl, have my toys? I wonder if it's his sister. Could Well, maybe. I do remember him having a sister. Yeah, I think it's his sister. Mm, well, so he hands him over because he he actually goes away to college. Okay, so he's well and truly done. Yeah, he's, he's well past playing with toys at mm. this stage and... It's there's a very weird scene in the the final one where he's like old enough that I remember he drives away, but right. he's like one last time I'm going to play with my toys. Mm. It's like no, that's not ever going to happen. No, nah, he'd throw him in a box and yeah. take him to Lifeline or oh, whatever. Like, Mum, do you want to just burn this shit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting moldy. Yeah, they're um, all destroyed. But one thing I really did love about that film, and it didn't make it to my list, is. After watching it, I remember being like, are my toys alive? Yes. Are How many times yeah. did you bust into your room <laughs> yes. to see if these toys were running to around? To like close the door and then open it really quickly yeah. and be like, oh, that's still sitting it, there. It fucked me up for mm. so long. Yep. Because I I genuinely thought my toys were alive. Same. I had a Furby. Yeah. Mm-mm. That's uh, bad. <laughs> bad news. <laughs> that thing walking around, I was scared out of my mind. Yeah. But it is something that really is, uh, it was kind of a... It's a movie that nobody else has ever made anything about. No, I guess. absolutely not. So, which is like, um, I guess a lot of the Disney movies are like that. You know, some of them have the very similar themes. You know, princess, prince, whatever. Yeah. But this was one of them that definitely. And I mean, it's a Pixar, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's a collaboration between yeah. the two. Oh, might have been a dream. Uh, Pixar oh, DreamWorks might have been. Yeah. See, I can never get things straight anymore. Mm. <laughs> Do you know? Someone said to me the other day, I don't know what I was watching. It was an animated show. Yeah. And, it, and they were like, "Oh, these Disney movies really good." I'm like, "This is not a Disney movie." <laughs> But people just think because it's animated, it yeah. must be Disney. Yeah, definitely. And there's kind of like this style, like mm. a secret sauce put over these movies that kind of have the same flavor. And mm-hmm. it's very easy to, to kind of go, that's Disney. Yeah. And like with the newer films that are coming out now, like, you know, the Moana yeah. and the Frozen, um, which I think are going to do quite well. But like we were talking about, I don't know how they're going to have to keep making. Like, I think they're making a Frozen 2. Yeah. They're going to have to keep that. Keep it. Momentum. Keep it fresh. Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. Now, Amy, right. is there any honourable mentions oh. before we wrap it up? Oh, here? look, I have so many. Okay, this it was so hard 
to make this list. I think we were talking about it briefly earlier. I it took me all week. Yeah. And only today did I be like, okay, let's cut it. Let's pick the top five. Um, but probably a couple that I will mention. I'm going to do three. Shall I do three? Yeah. Three honourable honourable mentions. Yeah, I've got three. So okay. let's stick with three. Look, I had more, but I'm going to pick three. <laughs> Um, Mary Poppins. Okay. Mary Poppins was on my list. Yes. Because it's Mary Poppins. I I've don't know. I've never seen it. <gasps> I've never you seen it. You have to it. watch it before the new one comes out. Uh, do I? Yes. Well, look. It never, it never appealed to me. It was so old. Mm, it's very old. What is it? 1965. Yeah, that's. Real old. That's. that's Not Bambi old. But, but old. pretty close. <laughs> All right, well, that one's on there. It's great. I'm definitely going to watch Emily Blunt as the new Mary Poppins. I reckon she will smash it. Now, is that a continuation? I think it is. I don't really know too much about it. I've tried to not uh, okay. look into it yeah. because I just want to go and be, oh, magic. Wow, you know? yeah. Oh, magic, oh, an umbrella, whatever. Um, number two was The Emperor's New Groove. Ah, oh, okay. I loved that really? film. Really? Oh, my God. I, this was probably, probably one of the ones I remember watching it because it was genuinely funny. Yes. Like, not just a Disney movie. They've got some funny bits in it, but this movie was funny. Okay, cool. And he's a llama. I didn't yes. even know what a llama was. Hey, man, it put llamas on the map. <laughs> <laughs> now I have a llama pajamas set, you know, all that kind of stuff. All right, last one. Last one. God, there's so many. Mm, the Mighty Ducks. Oh, the how Mighty did Ducks. I not put this on my the list? The Mighty Ducks whole series. Not even one, the first oh. one's pretty good, but all of them are good. How did I miss this, Amy? I don't know. I and love the Mighty Ducks. The too. Flying V yes. is how I've structured my whole life. <laughs> Do you know, I wanted to um, learn to play ice hockey after I watched the Mighty yeah. Ducks. And then my mum said, no, Amy, you live in tropical North Queensland. You're never going to skate. Yeah. And my dreams were crushed. And then I cried for a week. Yeah. And then I watched the Lion Creek and cried some more. <laughs> oh, man, I love the Mighty Ducks. Me too. Oh. Do you know what? I think I'm going to go home and watch the Mighty Ducks and not Lion King. Yeah. I, <laughs> Maybe I, that I should be my number one. Maybe we could like watch it together. We'll have a little movie night. Yeah. You, you bring your husband over. And I'll bring my kazoo. Oh. And we'll- <laughs> We'll mighty ducks it up. And we'll quack it around. Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, so good. What's that's his a- name? Josh. Josh, main character. What is his name? He was in Pacey from Dawson's Creek. Oh, you know who I only remember from who? this is uh, the guy in Daredevil now. Daredevil now. He was, he was actually one of oh, the, the meatheads the in the team. The one with the bandana. Yeah. Yes. I can't remember any of their oh. names. But anyway, that main kid, whoever it was that was in Dawson's Creek, mm. I had the biggest crush on him. Who didn't? I know. Who I didn't? really wish I could remember his name. <laughs> Girls wanted him and guys wanted to be him. Yeah, I'm so watching the Mighty Ducks when Hell I get home. Yeah. All three. Do a mar- yep. movie marathon. Yeah, I'm not going to work tomorrow. So would was... you watch a Mighty Ducks remake? I would. Yeah? I think I would. As long as it followed the same vein. Yeah. And it wasn't like this crappy spin they put on things nowadays where it's like, you know, a movie you'd watch on Nickelodeon. Yeah. Or some shit Fair like call. that. Mm. Fair call. My uh, my honourable mentions to quickly wrap it up was mm. Cars. Oh yes, and uh, you know that actually, I think I had two spin off. Yeah, series. I've not seen either of those. Either have I? I mean, Cars. I'm OG. <laughs> Only the OGs. Here. Only the OGs. Uh, Finding Nemo. Mm, that was it. I remember when that came out, and I was like, "Oh my god, it's in Australia!" Yes, so good, so good. And it was like the Great Barrier Reef, mm. which is like three steps from where we're recording. It's exactly. amazing, and. The newest movie probably in this whole uh, list actually is Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? I watched – I haven't seen the second It's Wreck-It not out Ralph. yet. Okay. That's probably why <laughs> I haven't seen it. But I was watching – it must have been like a short from um, the trailer or something. Yep. And it's the young girl, Sarah Silverman's mm. character. Whose voice I can't stand. Yeah. It's pretty uh, pretty interesting. It's rough. <laughs> it's it's, it's it sandpaper it. in my ear. Yeah. Anyway, she's in a – I don't know how she gets there, but she's in a room with all the Disney princesses. Mm-hmm. So very good to end it off that she's yes. like, they're like, are you a this? Are you a this? And she's like, no, I was kidnapped and I was blah, blah. And they're like, you're a princess. <laughs> it's lovely. Yeah. It's great. Well, listeners, let us know what your top five Disney movies are and uh, let us know who had the better list, me or Amy. Yeah, it was me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Mighty Ducks was on mine. Oh. <laughs> And that's going to do it for another episode. Stay tuned for next week's show where we discuss the rumours and what to expect in Avengers 4. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, man. I, I I can't wait to get my conspiracy theory hat on. I Honestly, 
can't even think of one. I'm just anyway. We'll talk about it. Oh, I've still. I've got a little list going. Okay. So um, Amy's gonna join us for that one as mm-hmm. well. So two weeks of Amy in a row. I know you yeah. thought you's, you's had lost me. Yeah, I'm still here. Can't get rid of you. I know. I'm like a bad smell. Eh, talking about bad smells. <laughs> people can find us on social media and you can find us on Facebook. That's Comic Confidential. We also have a listener community. So if you want to join us and just talk about anything, mm. do any, that. Any our, old thing. Any old thing. We are we just clocked over 300 members. Ooh. And uh, you can find us on Facebook. That is Comic Confidential Listener Community. We also have a website, ComicConPod.com. You can find our shows, other people's shows. On the network, it's mm. fantastic. If you want to support us on Patreon, you can, and that's patreon.com forward slash Comic Con Pod. Support the show from as little as a dollar a week, and you get yourself one whole bonus episode each week for a dollar. A dollar? Yeah. I paid more for parking. Yeah, so do I. Mm. Every a day. Lot a lot parking. more. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's wrap it up. Thanks for listening. As always, I'm Cade. I'm Amy, but not as always. Not as always, no, sometimes, sometimes Amy. Sometimes Amy. <laughs> and this has been Comic Confidential, a pop culture podcast. See ya. Cheers. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Amazing you remembered how to do all that. I know. I'm Look, I just save it at the back of my brain. Yeah. And it comes out. It's just like auto load. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, maybe I'll like an android. Oh, an android. Do you know what? I haven't seen a good android movie in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> If you love this podcast, then head over to ComicConPod.com to check out the other incredible shows on our network. Whether you love comedy, pop culture, or movie and TV reviews, CC Radio has got you covered. 